Right. You know, I always say that retention starts with recruiting, right? If it's all connected and you get that right up front, you just increase your chance for retention. You know, while we're talking about some of the talent development work, um, what's your approach to mentorship and sponsorship? And, you know, what are some of the steps that the company's taking to introduce more formalized mentoring and sponsoring programs? Um, and, you know, how does inclusion and allyship play a role in the mentoring and sponsoring associates for career growth? Well, you know, I told you um, that um, when we see good stuff, we uh, borrow shamelessly. So there's a, a board member of ours. Her name is Carla Harris. So Carla Harris um, uh, sits on our board. She used to be the chair of the Executive Leadership Council. Simply amazing woman. She's got a TED Talk on advisor, mentor, sponsor. Uh, we believe that um, advisor is someone you just go to for advice, someone who may be in a job that you want, someone that you might admire, someone who might have had past experiences that you want to learn more about. Um, we believe mentors are those that you can go tell um, everything that's going on with you. Here's what's going on. Here's what's working for me. Here's what's not working. Uh, we believe that um, you can have mentors who don't even know that they're your mentor. Um, I, I believe personally that you don't go ask someone, can Will you be my mentor? And can I meet with you on the second Tuesday of the third month every three weeks? Because nine times out of 10, people are gonna say, no, I don't have time for that. Plus, after the first meeting, you may decide, oh my God, I never wanna to talk to this person again. But you now you've committed for a year of meetings. So, so my recommendation always is um, seek out people who you, who you want to mentor you. You don't actually have to ask them to be your mentor. You can ask for 15 or 20 minutes for them to tell you about their background, their career. Here's the thing about many executives, there's been research that said um, a, a larger number of senior executives are introverts than extroverts. And that as nervous as you are about going in meeting with a mentor who might be two or three levels above you and how am I gonna spend 30 minutes with this person? They're just as nervous as you are. And, but they can all talk about themselves for 30 minutes. So get a set of questions that get them talking about themselves. And then what is it that you want to do? What is it that you want them to remember about you? And then at the end of the meeting, the question you ask is, do you mind if from time to time, I might seek to get another 15 or 30 minutes on your calendar? Most people will say yes to that. But if you ask for a meeting every second Tuesday, the third month of the full moon, every time they're going to say no, because I'm busy. I don't have time. Plus, I already have men mentors. You can eventually develop mentors like that. Sponsors is a different story. Um, and I, I, um, I always say, you want to look for people to be a sponsor who are, there's this old financial services company called EF Hutton. And they used to have these commercials that said, when EF Hutton talks, people listen. So you want to identify in your org structure, who's EF Hutton? Who is it that when they talk, people listen? And, and it isn't always your boss or even your boss's boss. It might be one of their peers. So identifying who that is, and then I, I tell my mentees, then you ask the question. If someone asks uh, about Cody, if, if I went to ask this EF Hutton about Cody, um, would, they, would they know who you are? Would they say something positive? Or would they say something negative? And what you want is to have relationships with E.F. Hutton that would say something positive about you. You don't tell your sponsors every single thing that's going on in your life, but you do want them to know enough about you and your work that they will take your paper in the room and speak up for you in the room when you're not in the room. See, the thing about corporate America, that's how promotions happen. Promotions happen in a room that you're never in. I, I'm a big fan of... Um, the Broadway play Hamilton. And one of my favorite songs is when uh, Hamilton convinced the uh, Southern uh, 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 early founding fathers to uh, let him create the treasury, which is pretty much the exact way he designed it, you know, during that time. And the way he convinced them was he said, hey, we'll move the capital to the DC area um, from where it was at the time. If you let me implement the, uh, 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 the treasury the way I want. And so the song went something like, I want to be in the room when it happens. Um, no one was in the room when it happens. Promotions happen in the room when you're not there and you need someone speaking up in that room for you 
uh, in a way that gets you the opportunities that you might not otherwise get. And that only happens through the relationships you've created. Um, and it takes time. Sponsors take time. Um, we ask all of our officers to mentor and sponsor, um, but we don't do assigned sponsorship because we actually don't think that works. Uh, we, act, we do have a, a tool we have internally that does blind matching for people <clears throat> who are interested in mentees or mentors, but, but uh, some people this is natural. They know how to go do this on their own. Others need help. So we've developed an internal tool where people can go in and either ask for mentors um, or mentees and we'll do blind matching. Um, you can send an email back and forth to each other and set your meeting up um, um, through that tool. Yeah, that sounds like it really levels the playing field and makes it the, the knowledge accessible to anybody who, who, who's genuinely interested in it. 